a house is not a home this is a chapter which we started yesterday so we had read it one or two pages also so we'll be continuing with the same thing so what we had read out uh, can i ask anyone to to re give the review of the chapter which we had done yes who will speak up like what we have already read out yes a house is not a home a house is not a home we read out two pages like what would you please tell me what we have read out already yes who will tell raghav will tell rule number 43 unmute yourself raghav Raghav Tanvin Kaur. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Tanvin. So tell us what we read yesterday. Ma'am, we have read that uh, there was a boy um, who had left his uh, for junior uh, school and has started high school, and he was feeling a uh, very um he was feeling very uh, sad because he has left his uh, old friends and old teachers and he was not able to cope up with the new school hmm. and uh, at and on one sunday when he was uh, doing his homework at dining table so suddenly his room was filled with smoke Mm. and uh, all his family um, uh, his mother and he they rushed out of uh, the house and when he uh, tried to call the fire brigade uh, his mother uh, rushed to the house to collect some important documents that belonged to his father and it was the only thing that uh, belongs to his father uh <clears throat> and uh, when the uh, boy he looked uh, looked at his mother that he uh, she was uh, running in into the house she he uh, called him and tried to stop her uh and then the firefighters they came and tried to control the situation by uh, giving them by giving his mother an oxygen mask hmm. and after some time their after 5 hours later their whole ho house was burned and there was nothing to look about hmm. then this spend the whole night at their grand um, at their grandparents house hmm. Hmm. yes so in between after you know they were able to save themselves when the house was almost gutted into fire then they realized that they had not been able to save the cat they they didn't remember the cat earlier and uh, now it was too late and they were sure like the cat might have died but the narrator you know the author he was missing his cat a lot okay so let's start off from this very page page number 51 though we had read it out but still we can uh, read these this page again so 5 hours later the fire was finally out okay i'm uh, rereading this this page 5 hours later the fire was finally out our house was almost completely uh, burnt down but then it struck me i hadn't seen my cat where was my cat much to my horror i realized that she was nowhere to be found then all at once it hit me the new school the fire my cat so what's the relation between these three things the new school the fire cat what's the relation between these three things will someone tell he says then all at once it hit me the school my fire uh, the fire my cat i broke down in tears and cried and cried i was suffering loss big time 
So what is the relation between three words, the new school, the fire and cat? Raghav, are you there now? Okay, Dharya. Dharya. Arshdeep Kaur. Arshdeep Kaur. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Dharya. So what's the relation between these three words, my new school, the fire, and my cat? Yes, ma'am. Hmm. Yes. So he doesn't know the answer. Arshdeep Kaur. Yes, ma'am. Yes, what's the uh, like relation between these three words? My cat, uh, cat, school, and fire. Ma'am, as he lost these three things, and he lost, lost the. Hmm. Yes, yes. And these things for him are related due to the sorrow he can feel. So, what's the relation? Like the things, like all these three things, were the source of sadness for him. He was in the new school and the new school, and he was not able to cop up well in the new school. He was missing his old school, the teachers and the friends. And then the fire had, uh, you know, all drained his house. And thirdly, the cat was missing now. So these three things had become the reason of his sadness now. Okay, so uh, all these three things were associated with some loss. The school was associated with the loss of his friends and the teachers. And then the fire uh, associated with the loss of his house and cat, you know, itself was lost. So then uh, he, I broke down in tears and cried and cried. I was suffering loss big time. The firemen wouldn't let us go back into the house that night. It was still too dangerous, dead or alive. I couldn't imagine leaving without knowing about my cat. Regardless, I had to go. So firefighters, they didn't allow any of these people to go inside the house again to see if the cat was there or not. Because it was still dangerous to go inside the house. Uh, why was it still dangerous for anyone to go inside the house even when the fire had been extinguished out? So you are to find out the reason, you are to tell the reason. So write this question like why was it still dangerous to go inside even when the fire had been uh, put out? So write this answer, find out these reasons, scientific fact behind it. And then uh, the main thing was that the author wanted to make out like whether the cat was dead or alive. He wanted to be sure, but he could not be. So what happened? The new, uh, regardless, I had to go. We piled into the car with just the clothes on our backs and a few of the firemen's blankets and made our way to grandparents' house to spend the night. The next day, Monday, I went to school. When the fire broke out, I was still wearing the dress I had to, I had worn to church that morning. Uh, I had worn to church that morning, but I had no shoes. I had kicked them off when I was doing my homework. So when he went to school next day, uh, then he had no shoes. Even uniform he did not have. What was he wearing? He was wearing the same dress which he had been wearing to the church. So still he was wearing something, but shoes he did not have. Because he could not even collect his shoes when the fire broke out, because he had kicked his shoes off. So he, he, in that hurry, he was not able to scramble up to those shoes and he just ran off. They became yet another casualty of the fire. Casualty is loss. So the fire made him lose, lose his shoes as well. So I had to borrow some tennis shoes from my aunt. Why couldn't I just stay home from school? Why couldn't I just stay home from school? My mother won't hear of it. But I was totally embarrassed by everything. So first the narrator, the author thought like he could take an off from school. See what a tragedy he had been into. His house was totally destroyed. He didn't even have his shoes to put on. 
but even then his mother would not let him take a holiday this is called parenting okay being strict so his mother would not let him take an off she would not even hear about it letting him take holidays is a secondary thing she would not even listen from this boy saying that let me take an off but i was totally embarrassed by everything so what made him embarrassed number one he was not in his proper uniform and then secondly he was not wearing those shoes which were he was not wearing the school shoes so the the good children you know they uh, they get embarrassed when they are not in proper uniform in the school so the clothes i was wearing was gone sorry the clothes i was wearing looked weird of course when you are coming in the school when the whole school is dressed up properly and you are wearing a civil dress then obviously you uh, appear to be very strange i had no books or homework and my bag pack was gone so he had no books he had not done his homework so in this kind of situation also see when his uh, such a big tragedy had happened with the narrator even then he was thinking about homework but here we have great children here those who don't bother to do homework even when they are sitting at home in the cozy quilts even then they don't mind whether the homework is to be done or not isn't it hello anyways so at that time also he had no books no homework or even his backpack had gone so even the his school bag it was not there i had my life in that backpack i had my life in that backpack how the more i tried to fit in the worse i got was i destined to be an outcast and a geek all my life that's what i felt like i didn't want to grow up change or have to handle life if it was going to be this way i just wanted to curl up and die so this whole, whole loss you know this all loss you know this kind of big loss whatever the loss he had incurred you know it made him become disappointed at that time he did not want to become courageous he didn't want to get up and uh, be there he just wanted to die when you when there is such kind of big tragedy when there is big loss when there is no hope in the near future then this kind of depression is obvious because the loss was very 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 big one so i walked around school like a zombie everything felt surreal and i wasn't sure what was going to happen all the security i had known from my old school my friends my house and my cat had all been ripped away so whatever the whatever gave him sick, sick whatever made him secure maybe it was school maybe it was his house maybe it was the cat whatever made him secure that was all gone when i walked through what used to be my house after school that day i was shocked to see how much damage there was whatever hadn't burnt was destroyed by the water and chemicals they had used to put out the fire the only material things not destroyed were the photo albums documents and some other personal items that my mother had managed to heroically rescue but my cat was gone and my heart ached for her so everything had been destroyed except the things which the mother had managed to procure from the house there was no time to grieve my mother rushed me out of the house we would have to find a place to live and i would have to go buy some clothes for school so there, there was they didn't even have time to grieve see number one the loss had been it was an immense loss and secondly they didn't have the time to grieve also see and moreover when uh, if they had time to grieve then that would have uh, uh, resulted in making these people become more uh, depressed so good it is good that uh, after some shock or after some grief uh, after some loss you know if one doesn't really think much about it then it's better so they didn't even have time to grieve because they had to find out a suitable place to live they had to find out uh, they had to get some shoes and or clothes for the school we had to borrow money from my grandparents because there were no credit cards cash or even any identification uh, to be able to withdraw money from the bank 
everything had gone up in smoke. So now they even had to borrow money from grandparents because everything, including the credit cards and debit cards and all, they had gone in the fire. So now we can even imagine how big the loss actually was. Because unless, okay, so the week, the rubble that used to be our house, the, that week, the rubble that used to be our house was being cleared off the lot. So after that, uh, uh, you know, fire, when the house had become a whole rubble, uh, it was all cleared off. The debris was cleared off. Even though we had rented an apartment nearby, I would go over to watch them clear away debris, hoping that my cat was somewhere to be found. So narrator, uh, each day when the debris was being cleared off, uh, the narrator would go there to see if the cat could be found. She was gone. I kept thinking about her as that vulnerable little kitten. In the early morning when I would disturb her and get out of bed, she would tag along after me, climb up my ro robe and crawl into my pocket to fall asleep. I was missing her terribly. So it, was al it always seems that bad news spreads quickly and in my case, it was no different. So it is uh, heard that when there is some bad news and it spreads quickly like a wildfire and it was so in his case also, everyone in high school, including the teachers was aware of my plight. I was embarrassed as if somehow I, I were responsible. What a way to start off at a new school. This was not the kind of attention I was looking for. So whatever had happened with the narrator, the whole school got to know about it, the teachers and even the other classmates. And the narrator, you know, he never expected this kind of, you know, attention. He never wanted this kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, he, didn't, he didn't want that others should know him uh, through this kind of news. The next day at school, people were acting even more strange than usual. I was getting ready for gym class at my locker. People were uh, milling around me asking me to hurry up. So the next day people, um, the students, maybe you can say they acted even more strangely than he could expect. So when he was like getting ready for the gym class at, the lock, uh, at his uh, locker, then people, you know, gathered around him and they told him to hurry up. I thought it's strange, but in the light of the past few weeks, nothing would surprise me. So when uh, somebody had seen so many shocks, when there had been such unpleasant surprises in one's life, then these kinds of surprises one doesn't mind. So it almost seemed that they were trying to shove me into the gym. Then I saw why. So it almost, the narrator realized as if they were trying to send him into the gym by hook or by crook. And later on, he realized the reason. There was a big table set up with all kinds of stuff on it just for me. So what he saw inside the gym, that there was a big table and on the table, so many things were kept on it. And th those things were all for the author. They had taken up a collection and bought me school supplies, notebooks, all kinds of different clothes, jeans, tops, sweatshirts, sweatsuits. It was like Christmas. So what was there on the table? On the table, whatever the narrator might need, maybe the notebooks, maybe the shoes or maybe the sweatshirts or whatever all kinds of things were kept on the table for him it was like a christmas i was overcome by emotion of course even now i am getting emotional at this uh, what is written here then the person with whom this happened that person might have become emotional people who had never spoken to me before were coming up to me to introduce themselves i got all kinds of invitations to their houses their genuine outpouring of concern really touched me. So each and every student, each and every classmate, the one who had never talked to him earlier, even that friend of him came to him and introduced him to him. And moreover, they all invited narrator to their houses. So it was really a very touching experience. In that instant, I finally breathed a sigh of relief and thought for the first time that things were going to be okay. I made friends that day. A month later, I was at my house watching them rebuild it. So after a month, 
those all people those who had been offering him help they were rebuilding his house but this time it was different i wasn't alone i was with two of my new friends from school it took a fire it took a fire for me to stop focusing on my feelings of insecurity and open up to all the wonderful people around me now i was sitting there watching my house being rebuilt when i realized that my life was doing the same thing so what a big lesson the narrator learned so what lesson he learned that uh, the whole world is with you but it took a fire means it took the it took his whole house which was destroyed by the fire to make him realize that yes he was not all, all alone before this incident before this uh, tragic incident uh, this boy author was very insecure he was missing his old school he was not able to cope up with the school but now he realized that the that he had so many people those who were very wonderful great people were around him so now he realized that he was his life was on track and it was normal while we sat there on the curb planning my new bedroom i heard someone walk up to me from behind and say does this belong to you when i turned around to see who it was i couldn't believe my eyes a woman was standing there holding my cat i leapt up and grabbed her out of the women's arms so when they were sitting there and were planning for his their bedroom then a woman uh, asked him if that cat was his then it was his cat and the author was just you can you might expect like how much uh, you know anxious he might have become to see his cat in front of him i held her close to me and cried into that beautiful orange fur she purred happily my friends were hugging me hugging the cat and jumping around so friends were also very happy that the narrator had got his uh, loving cat back so even the friends were jumping and they were also happy apparently my cat had been so freaked by the fire that she ran over a mile away so because the fire had been so dangerous for the cat she might have got scared off and she ran about a mile away at that time her collar had our phone numbers on it but woman took her in and worked hard to find out whose cat it was some how she knew this cat was loved and sorely missed so that woman took the cat away and uh, she did her best to uh, 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 yes even the phone numbers were written on the collar but our phones had been destroyed and disconnected so of course in the fire nothing was uh, there so their phones had all been destroyed and disconnected so the woman took some time to find out like whose cat it was and moreover she wanted to return the cat because the cat also missed his um, uh, this uh, his her master as i sat there with my friends and my cat curled up in my lap all the overwhelming feelings of loss and tragedy seemed to dismiss so now when he was there in the company of his friends and the cat then all the feelings of tragedy all the feelings of loss had been uh, were over i felt gratitude for my life for my new friends the kindness of a stranger and the loud purr of my beloved cat my cat was back and so was i so he was thankful for whatever he had been able to get in his life and moreover he was uh, because his cat was back so was i so what do you mean by i was also back what do you mean by this i was back uh, my cat was back and so was i so i was also back means i was i also uh, started living my life with with all that zeal and enthusiasm with which i was earlier so back to life he was the even the author was back to life earlier he had been you know he had lost that connection with the life but now he was back to life so far it was a beautiful and a wonderful lesson i guess you all might have liked it loved it so the point is that uh, uh many a times we feel that uh, uh, we feel lonely we feel alienated we feel sad because of something or the other but the fact is that people around us they are all wonderful okay all people around us not just the ones whom we consider as good or bad basically uh people around us happen to be all wonderful 
the point is that we don't understand them so it's not that only the loss should make us realize that the people around us are wonderful otherwise also we should value the people who are around us maybe our family maybe our friends maybe a simple cat the way the author had so all people around us are wonderful and we should value them okay if people are with us we are there otherwise in the absence of good people around us or the friendly people around us we will become depressed the way, the way author was so it is useless to become depressed because all people around us happen to be wonderful people all okay it's our uh, you know uh, stupid judgment which makes us feel that somebody is not good or somebody is good otherwise the fact is all are wonderful people okay the chapter has finished but uh, we have got uh, we have got these five six questions and then have you have any of your classmates or schoolmates had an experience like the one described in the story where they needed help so describe so here instead of having a classmate or schoolmate you can say like did you come to know about anyone who uh, whose condition was somewhat like this okay the one who needed help so describe how they were helped so describe an incident describe a person who needed help and how was he or how were they helped so this uh, uh, paragraph is to be written okay not exactly classmate or schoolmates but like the any any person who was helped so suggested readings are there malgudi days by rk narayan very famous write up modern hindi stories by edited by hindu jain her story so far the tales of girl child in india edited by monica das so these are the suggested readings you can go for okay so tomorrow uh, we'll be discussing these five questions be ready for the discussion is that clear and today you people go through the story again and tomorrow there will be oral discussion of these five questions and sixth question uh, sorry sixth question and then this this topic is to be written today this is your homework write this paragraph would that be fine and send me the attendance raghav send me the attendance today okay